benchmark is supposed to be. Hello, everyone. I'm really glad to be here and really glad because, uh, well, first time in Bulgaria, that's reason, one of the reasons, and another reason is because of you. I love presenting to people, and uh, well, you, you're a really good audience. So far, uh, um, since I've uh, checked how you respond to other talks, and that's impressive. Okay, so uh, today, um, despite the fact that I am a maintainer of the E framework, I won't be talking exactly about the framework or how it's made or something like that. It is more general talk about the packaging principles. But uh, the thing is that, the, well, we're doing the E version three, and this version is quite different conceptually from the previous versions of framework that were monolithic. This one is made of packages. And it was really scary to divide the framework into packages, and these principles uh, helped to actually divide it and to lose this fear, to overcome it. So um, what are the packaging principles? Well, they, they are additional things to, you probably know the solid, it was mentioned multiple times during the day and will be mentioned again. And this talk is not about it. Let's start from the very, very beginning. First, uh, I should mention that in order to apply any principle correctly, you should understand what's behind it. So uh, any principle that you read, if you do not understand why, why it is like that, you will not apply it correctly. Uh, let's begin from the very, very start. So um, what is abstraction? Abstraction is a generalization of essential and throwing out all, everything that is non-essential. And well, it sounds quite simple, but in fact, it's not. What is it for? Uh, well, to fit unfitable. So um, this thing is something from the military. Normal humans cannot do things like that, cannot manage it, because it's, well, everything in one layer, it's complicated, it's complex, and you forget about what is connected with what very quickly. The main problem is, well, this thing, a human brain, and it's not as good as we uh, want to thought it is. Um, yeah, if we um, check what, what is in human brain, um, well, that's very simple explanation, but still, uh, we have like the short-term memory and long-term memory. Short term is used for the immediate operations and long one is for like storage. So um, in a short term memory, um, it's not good. First, the time to life of the item is like 20 seconds. If you want to keep, in, it, it, keep it in memory for a longer period, you should like refresh it and ping it all the time. And yeah, that's the lose of focus. That's problem for many of us. So we're just trying to focus and then the notifications from some messenger pop up and you're just losing context and should get back to it. And yeah, that happens. So uh, we have input and output and uh, we can put some things in, into short memory, but there is a problem. The humans cannot operate with high number of items. So the uh, psychological researches revealed that uh, in 89, it was George Miller who said that we can keep into memory like seven plus minus two items. But later, the number was corrected and it's actually four plus minus one. And that's a very disappointing number. That's totally disappointing number. And well, number, number depends on items very much, so uh, there, there are tricks like chunking. So uh, if you want to remember a number like that, that is not easy if you are trying to remember by a single digit. But if you'll uh, divide it like that, that's manageable. 
And if you'll count the chunks, that's one, two, three, four, five. Exactly five items. So that, that matches the, this research pretty much. We can bear with five items easily. So, um, well, the, all the architecture is needed to deal with complex systems. And for our brain, uh, two complicated systems come very fast because of these limitations. And we are introducing what? Layers. Layers are saving us from dealing with too many items at once. Five entities in a layer are, well, like, perfect. Great, we can deal with that. But there is a problem. There is a problem that often we uh, create more than five layers. And instead of, uh, well, horizontal complexity, we're getting a vertical complexity. And in my opinion, that's much worse. It's harder to refactor later. So yeah, Houston, we have a problem. Okay. Um, and we are getting this, exactly this. With too many layers, we're getting this unpleasant thing called wrong lasagna. Okay. Um, yeah, and abstraction actually is a tool, it's not a goal. So if you um, hear someone uh, talking about something like clean architecture and that it should be done, uh, and if you're writing an engine for a simple block, don't listen, never. If you are doing a simple thing, the architecture should stay really, really simple. And sometimes, uh, well, for the quick, jobs for the, if you want to like sort some kind of data, just don't do any abstraction at all. That's fine. Abstraction is not a goal, in, it's actually a necessary evil. So if you can avoid it, then avoid it. But there, there is a trick. The trick is that on a long run, it may be not so obvious that you can deal without abstraction because the code evolves, the business domain evolves, and eventually the complexity is introduced and you should deal with it somehow. So how to build an abstraction without making everything even worse? Um, there are two things that are the foundation of the, well, all, everything about the structure in your code. It's called the cohesion and coupling. Cohesion is, um, well, grouping s related things together. That's a good thing, uh, that, that is what should be done all the time. So all, uh, common related things should be grouped. And coupling is when the unrelated things are grouped or interdependent. That means that coupled things will break in a very unexpected ways. So you're changing one thing and another thing is broken. So are there any simple validation rules or markers to actually achieve this high cohesion and low coupling? Actually, yes, these are called solid. And it, they, these were invented, well, formulated by Robert Martin. Not really invented, he just reformulated the cohesion and coupling principles in a, well, this way. There are six principles and not the topic of the talk, because th these were mentioned and these were actually explained. And yeah, but uh, we're we're going to talk about packages instead. What is a package? A package is the code that is grouped. Usually, the code is in classes, and these classes are grouped into well, models, libraries, and even microservices could be called a package. They are very similar and the similar rules could apply to them. So uh, what are the right questions we should ask when uh, dealing with packages? First is how to design packages and the second is how to use packages, how to uh, choose your dependencies correctly. So uh, does cohesion and coupling apply to packages? Well, yes, it does. Of course it does, but uh, can we use the same solid markers, same principles to deal with packages? Actually, not really. And that's very unfortunate, but the good thing is that at the same year, the same guy, Robert Martin, actually uh, did more principles than are uh, widely known, and there are actually six more. 
But while solid is fairly uh, well explained and mentioned everywhere, these are kind of hidden. So uh, there are three pr principles for package cohesion. That's how you design things. That as that well, the abbreviations are will be explained a bit later. And there are three additional principles about using packages. So the first principle is REP. That's reuse, release, equivalency principle. Uh, the, it sounds the definition is the granule of reuse is the granule of release. Well, it's a bit cryptic, but it means that we should group and prepare code to be reused. Uh, we should release with the proper version, Syn well, something like Semver. Semver is actually, you should use it if you're not using it yet, because the package managers like Composer, and that's the only one for PHP so far, well, at least the popular one, that's the defector standard, and it, it is relying on Semver. If you're not following Semver, lots of unexpected things may happen. Um, I know it because we uh, followed non semver versioning for like years with the E framework, and unexpected things did happen. So, um, the second principle is common closure principle. Classes that change together are packaged together. That is very similar to the uh, solid's single responsibility, and the single responsibility principle is understood very, very wrong most of the time. So people are uh, saying the, like the definition is uh, the class should do one thing, one job, but that, that's not correct. That's actually very incorrect because the um, class API should be um, used for uh, one, by, by uh, one client. So either it's used as a whole or it's not used at all. So the change should be within the package. If, you, if the package uh, is changed, uh, if the change in the package causes the change in other packages, then you're violating this common closure principle. And yeah, uh, that's a bad thing. And um, another thing is the common reuse principle. Classes that are used together are packaged together. Uh, that means that package should be focused. So client should either as I said, use everything or nothing. Okay, that sounds very good, right? It's all okay, we can apply these principles, uh, but yeah, reality is harsh. Have you seen this triangle ever? Yes, okay, great. So uh, for the ones who do not know about this one, it's the triangle made by, I think it was invented by some design company and there are three sides. It says good, fast, cheap, and you can choose only two. So the only two, either you are getting a good product fast, but it's not cheap, or you're getting the fast and cheap stuff, but it's not good, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the, unfortunately, the same thing is true about the packaging principles. So this diagram was made by Dr. Stefan Kluth in Max Planck Institute for Physics. I was really amazed that the, actually in the physics institute they're learning the object-oriented programming on the very good level, but yeah, they are. Uh, so uh, the edges of this triangle are really not really pleasant. So either you are getting uh, unneeded releases, so you're tagging and tagging and tagging stuff and checking it all the time, or you're changing uh, many packages at once, so you're violating the boundaries, or there is no reuser convenience. So, yeah, that's difficult. So uh, the question is, what to start with? Which principle to violate first, and how to continue later? The answer is on early stages, you should focus on CCP and REP. So yeah, CCP and REP mean unneeded releases, unfortunately. So uh, when we started splitting the eFramework 2 into packages for the third version of the framework, the package numbers were kinda insane. That's about 100 packages. And, well, releasing them and tagging them should be hard, but since for the, even for the version two we had automation tools, 
We know how to deal with that, so if you have that many packages, just create a tool that automates releasing them. Uh, it will be okay. And also, after you do initial set of releases, you can um, keep some stable packages stable and not release anymore, so you have less and less things to maintain, to release, and well, the infrastructure is great, it's big, but some things just set in stone and they do not break. Uh, now to the principles that are closer to actually a real use case, because this green stuff is for like framework developers and library developers. Maybe you have like a set of libraries in your company and you're reusing it, but likely not. But these, the uh, principles about using packages and dependencies are to be applied to any, any project, and yours as well. So the first principle is ADP, that's a cyclic dependencies principle, and that means that a dependency graph of packages must have no cycles. So cycles are causing cascading problems. So for example, if there is an error in one package and the, there is a cycle in the dependency graph, then all the packages in the cycle would break in cycle and the worst thing is yet that you won't be aware which package is kind of broken since they all interdependent and even the broken package is dependent on the packages that broken because of this package. So yeah, that's very bad. So how to check for cycles? Well, that's kind of simple. You draw the graph and then look at it. <laughs> okay, but uh, well, drawing the graph manually is really uh, not really rewarding stuff. You should not do that. Uh, there is the include graph composer package, but uh, the bad thing about most of the packages involved in these principles for PHP, these are not really well maintained, uh, and yeah, these actually need help. So for this package, uh, graph uh, composer, uh, you're installing the library into your project, you're running it, uh, well, first applying the patch from the pull request because it will uh, draw lots of unneeded stuff if you will not apply it. Um, and then you're getting a graph like this. So yeah, uh, the um, circle is the package you're applying it to and the rest are dependencies. This is very small uh, library called arrays that is for the e-framework. Usually the graph is bigger. But here we can see that the, there are actually no cycles and the dependencies are acyclic. That's good. So um, the less dependencies, the simpler everything is. So th that's uh, okay. And have you ever heard about the left pad package in the Node.js infrastructure? Yes, but not everyone. So I'll, I'll dig a bit into that. So uh, the Node.js is very huge infrastructure is, and with many, many packages. And well, the principle that says do not repeat yourself is taken to extreme. They created a package that does left pad in the string. So for example, you need a string of length 10 that is uh, padded with zeros, and they have a library for that, a separate package. So uh, this package was actually used by everything in Node.js infrastructure, by the frameworks, by other libraries, I think even by the NPM itself. And then, uh, well, the author of this package is getting angry and removes the package. And everything, everything all the infrastructure that just falls apart in one day. So yeah, that's why you should not really depend on the really simple packages and it's better to implement things yourself. Well. I'm pretty sure everyone here can implement left pad in, right? So why depending on a whole package that doing that? So yeah, how to break the cycle? First, uh, there is a dependency inversion principle that's about classes. And yeah, we can introduce an interface and that, that's fine. And well, 
rely on this interface. And there is another principle that is about packages, that's CRP. That is about moving this interface into a, a dedicated package. And well, at first that looks terrible because you, you have an interface in the whole package and that's, well, looks like kind of this uh, left pad package, but it's not, it's actually not. If you look at the PHP fig interfaces, so something like the PSR7 that was uh, earlier uh, in the talk, uh, you'll see that the, it's actually okay. It's okay and it's useful and it leads to interoperability, to ability to exchange the package with something else. So that's fine. Uh, alternatively, you may just rethink the whole package, but that's complicated. So uh, another principle is stable dependencies principle, SDP. Uh, it says like depend in the direction of stability. Well, the meaning is that you cannot build stable thing on a really unstable base. Can we measure this instability? The answer is yes. That's the, actually the best part of these principles metrics. So the instability is the number of efferent coupling, that's number of classes that depend on the package, divided by the efferent coupling uh, plus the afferent coupling. That's the number of classes package depends on. And instability is from uh, one that, co that is unstable to zero, that is stable. So how to increase the stability? And there is another principle for that, stable abstractions principle that says that a package abstractness should increase with stability. That's okay. Uh, so stable packages are abstract, like the interfaces. You should never change the interface if many packages depend on that. And maybe release a new version using the proper version in scheme like Semver, but yeah. So the packages like the PHP fig interfaces or uh, something like that would unlikely change and these are extremely stable. So the flexible packages are concrete and the most flexible package is actually your application that you're developing. So it's almost al always unstable and that's totally fine because the business changes, you're automating it, it changes constantly just on the fly so it's unstable and that's perfect. So can we measure abstractness? Yes, that's another metric and abstractness is the number of abstract ent entities in a package divided to the total number of abstract and non-abstract entities in a package. And, well, the abstractness goes from zero, that is uh, totally concrete, to one that is abstract. So abstract packages are stable, it is safe to depend on them, and concrete packages are unstable. That's easy to change them. That means if you have an application and you're starting to depend on the, well, really un uh, um, stable or unstable package, that's fine. But if you're creating a library, you should really, really change this metric of abstractness and concreteness because if you want this library to be reused, it should be fairly stable. So there is a thing called D-metric that's a graph if you'll uh, on the x-axis put the abstractness and on the y-axis put the instability, you'll have this thing and the uh, green dots are the classes that are involved in the, uh, well, non-green dot that's probably displayed as red or orange, I don't know. Uh, so this thing is um, not on the line and this line is yeah called the main line and it's called the d-metric that's abstractness plus instability minus one zero is good one is bad so if we'll draw the red areas that means these areas are really really bad but there are exceptions sometimes the uh, left bottom corner zero zero is okay so this is left bottom co corner is uh, very uh, high stability and very low abstractness. How could that be? It's libraries. So the libraries like strings, like arrays, like STD library in the C language are both very stable and non-abstract at all. 
So for these cases, it's fine. Um, there are PHP tools that can visualize uh, this thing, except their red areas. These I, I was drawing in the Photoshop. Yeah. Maybe a patch could be sent to these libraries to draw their red areas as well, but maybe not. Uh, okay, so the PHP tools are PHP depend and PHP metrics. I, I'm really glad that PHP depend was uh, picked not very long time ago, but by someone and developed further. It was like in abandoned state for about a year. So same as solid, these principles and metrics are not really a dogmatic but these are just tools. If you need to build something, uh, yeah, something really um, good, something really stable, you should try to draw these graphs, check for the cycles, check for the metrics, uh, draw the main line, and check that your packages are closer to, to the main line. If you're not, of course, building the very non-abstract and very stable library. So, Correct design results in, yeah, it's, it results in like the explosion of number of packages. And it's, it is very, very scary. It is very scary because you have no idea how to maintain all that, how to make uh, so many releases, and you're scary that you lose all your time just taking the packages. But that, that's not actually bad, and I can say that after some time passes, it becomes much better because you, you can release these packages independently and it is, in fact, much better than the, well, major frameworks did a thing called subsplit. That is when uh, all the code is maintained in a single repository and then uh, they're taking a release and it automatically splits it to individual packages that could be reused individually. That's what uh, Laravel does, that's what Symfony does, and that's what the previous versions of G framework do. We, uh, we're not doing that anymore, and it's actually better. So principles are there to keep you away from either left pad situation or a very big monolith. And these tools actually help you produce a code that breaks much less because uh, the dependency graph uh, is correct because of well, the metrics are correct. These are just indicators. The good thing is that it breaks less, and that's the whole purpose. That's it. Questions time. Thank you very much. Oh, and there, there is a list of the recommended readings uh, about the memory and psychology. I cannot recommend anything other than Wikipedia. It's not a really good source, but at least it has some names. You can Google and move on. Uh, there is a C2 Wiki, that's really, uh, well, kind of ugly interface, but this is the Wiki maintained by the people who started it all, who actually developed more majority of the principles we are using nowadays, and that's very great read if you, if you manage to navigate it. Well, the, yeah, it's weird. Then the principles of OOD by Robert Martin, and yeah, the Agile software development, principles, practices, and, yep. And also, the, uh, I really recommend the book by Matthias Novak, that is Principles of Package Design, and the good thing is that examples in that one are in PHP. So, here's the list. Uh, I think the slides will be available, and, yeah. I'm really waiting forward for questions, don't be afraid. I think we have uh, some time. Yeah, 10 minutes, great. You may ask questions about the e-framework as well, if you want to. Okay. <laughs> A hand, great. Um, thanks for the talk. Uh, actually, what you, what you did with uh, we Three is, uh, is as far as I can understand what uh, Zen did with uh, the from two to three. You split uh, uh, the framework into separate packages, or or I, am I wrong? 
Yeah, we, we did the split, so we split the framework into lots of packages and the, well, the, 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 there are uh, unstable packages like the application template, but the, there are no uh, core package anymore, so they just combined out of many. Okay, thanks. So actually these packages could be reused uh, without the E framework. The goal was to uh, introduce uh, the framework into the larger PHP community since before it was kind of closed. Yeah, hi. Yeah, thanks for the talk. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously when you've got a lot of packages, you need to share some sort of configuration file. So, you know, your CS configuration, maybe your uh, Travis or CI configuration. Um, and you want to synchronize this probably over all the packages. How, how do you handle that? How do you automate that when you've got, you know, 100 packages? Uh, you, mean, you mean the meta files? The meta files or In the GitHub? Yeah, and any Well, for the GitHub, uh, there, there are two ways doing that. First, th there is a trick. Uh, not many people are aware of that. I was not aware of that because before I have actually had a call with the GitHub guys and they, they told me that it's possible. So in the organization, you create a repository named .github and then you put some meta files in that and it's picked up by any repository in the organization automatically. But that's GitHub specific. And actually, uh, I was not aware of that, so we made a tool that just copies a set of files from one source to every package and then commits it and then pushes it automatically. Okay, thanks. Uh, a quick question about uh, two things that I noticed. There's uh, abstract packages and concrete packages. How do those relate to an uh, actual application? Do you inject a dependency of the concrete package to the abstract package? Okay, that, that's a very good question because, yeah. And in the application, it is preferably to, uh, when, the, when the dependencies are injected, it's preferably to rely on the abstract packages, on the interfaces actually. So these are usually coming from the abstract packages and concrete packages are implementations. So you define implementations in the dependency injection container, if the framework has one. But most of the frameworks nowadays have it. Okay, thank you. All right, if you have uh, extra questions or something that is to be asked privately. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm here, I'm not leaving, and I'm here today and tomorrow. There's you can catch me. One more question over there. One more question, yeah. great. Yeah. Thanks. I'm not seeing it well because of the lights. I, I know. I want to ask about uh, e-framework. Yeah. Do, do you plan to get rid of uh, Bootstrap 3 and migrate to Bootstrap 4? and uh, even better to detach from the front-end framework at all. We want to detach from the framework, from the client side at all. So the thing was, uh, the original maintainer of the E framework, uh, his name is Tian Duye, he's Chinese, he started it all and we were a team and we were working on many, many things for the version two we've implemented like crazy amount of things that, that work. It's like the, our own database abstraction layer that works transparently for the SQL databases and no SQL databases and can do relations between MongoDB and MySQL transparently. So really crazy stuff. And then he got really busy with the new job and uh, left the project. And then we realized how much contribution he did. <laughs> and he realized that we are trying to maintain too much. And th that's why we are now trying to drop things, uh, one of the reasons that we are trying to drop things that, that are not related. Another reason for dropping the JavaScript stuff is that, well, uh, the JavaScript is interesting because there are many frameworks and new frameworks are created and getting trendy in half a year. So you are starting a, a project on a really brand new, really cool framework and when you're releasing the project, 
you're releasing on the obsolete, outdated framework that no one wants to develop with. I'm really gr glad that PHP is not like that. Well, thank you very much, Alex. Great talk. Thanks.